Hello, I'm Dr. Dhanraj Chavan. Today, I'm going to explain the procedure of foam sclerotherapy for varicose veins. So, first, we will screen the patients. Uh, we need to see how severe the varicose veins are according to the usually the classification that is used is the CEAP classification and most of the patients that usually come to us are after C3 that is once the patient gets symptomatic it is then when he starts coming to us when uh, most of the patients in India usually they're not worried about the varicose vein unless they start getting the pigmentation unless it starts to ulcerate unless they start getting the pain and once that happens it is then that the patient comes to us and even then the patient often wants uh, minimally invasive procedures or most important is what he asks is can the medicines cure it varicose veins is something that medicines will not be able to make it much of a difference in so we have to go in for the uh, procedural uh, therapies in it and i'm going to explain the foam sclerotherapy now the first and foremost uh, while doing a patient of uh, varicose veins is to screen him to do, get a Doppler uh, ultrasound done, we see whether the patient uh, screen him first for deep venous thrombosis. That's a contraindication for doing any procedure on uh, varicose veins that has to be managed first. Once we are sure of that, then we scan the full leg, see the competence of his valves, the saphenofemoral valves, the saphenopopliteal valves. We see the perforators, which of them are incompetent and uh, which of them are good enough to not intervene in and once we get to know that preferably during the if it is done uh, before the procedure we get an idea of how much involvement is there or then we also have to do a uh, if possible uh, ultrasonography assisted foam sclerotherapy which is also one of the options that we can always do once we get the ultrasonography report we see uh, what all uh, valves are incompetent, what all perforities are incompetent and accordingly decide the management. Once the patient comes to us with the sonography report and before the procedure, we then take clinical photographs of the patient, very important in different angles, different lighting. And once that is, uh, once we have that, then prepare the patient for surgery, uh, clean them totally, uh, disinfect, sterilize it, beat it in spirit, savlon, the full uh, surgical protocol that, ever, that we follow. And once that is done, then uh, most of the bigger veins that are there, the deeper veins or the bigger veins, we usually uh, cannulate them with a 24 or 26 number cannula so that we have a proper access to it. And when we want to inject the foam, we are very sure and accurately able to inject the foam inside. Once we cannulate the uh, patient, then we make him lie down on the bed and uh, start the procedure. The procedure, the uh, sclerosins that, we, that are commonly used for the procedure as discussed are sodium tetradecyl sulfate or polydocanol, commonly used. There are also many other uh, sclerosing agents that are there which can be used too. The uh, sodium tetradecyl sulfate polydocanol is available as a 3% solution diluted with normal saline and then converted into a foam. The technique that we use is the Tessari technique in which uh, the foam is diluted 1 is to 4 or 1 is to 6 uh, uh, in the ratio with air and uh, agitated with a 3-way connector. Once we get the foam, we start with the cannulated veins, uh, usually amount that we require. Depending on the veins, the concentration of uh, the sclerosant is decided. So if maybe a uh, truncal vein which requires a higher uh, concentration of the uh, sclerosin or if it's another reticular or a telangiectic veins lesser concentrations are there so once we get, uh, inject the foam into the uh, cannulated vein there's first the first reaction that the vein has is venous constriction the vein first constricts and then there's a thrombus formation eventually a fibrous cord is formed which over the next two to three months will get absorbed in the body. As we come down and the vein, veins get more tortuous and they're difficult to cannulate, then we usually get the veins marked. So the veins are marked according to how we see them when the patient is standing and th that marked positions, we go into the veins. It's usually a, uh, requires some clinical skill and uh, clinical acumen to know where the veins are and gauge the depth and accordingly inject the foam into the vein accurately. The, uh, if the foam is extravasated then it becomes a problem usually and 
uh, there may be some pain to the patient which is usually tolerable not much to be worried about so we go on injecting the foam throughout the course of the vein and uh, to make sure that we have completed the course usually a sonography helps us to understand uh, how much of the vein is covered the patient is usually comfortable throughout the procedure and uh, we usually if required give him a analgesic so that the pain threshold is raised he doesn't feel the pain and it makes him comfortable throughout the procedure